Welcome back to Winter Pride 2023. I'm still Peace Egg, and we are now ready for the next run. I hope you're ready for some Sonic Robo Blast 2, playing as Tails, beating the entire game. Arcania CQ is here to show you everything about it. Nia, whenever you're ready, let's fly. Hello everyone, my name is Arcania, or you can just call me Nia. And I'm here together with Roman, who is on commentary with me. So hello there, Roman. Hello, and greatest of all of the marathons, you handsome people out there. And I'm going to be running Tails, um, which is pretty much our flying fox companion to Sonic. So I will let Roman count me down. Oh, I'm allowed to do the countdown. Ooh, that'll be fun. So, are we ready everywhere? I hope so. Yes, no, maybe so. In five, four, three, two, one. Best boy, ahoy! Mmm! Because <laughs> we are kicking off strong in Green Flowers of Night 1. As the best boy tales, for those of you who don't know, I'm a big fan of the orange best boy. I will refer to him as only the best boy, nothing else. But, as you can already see, the core mechanic of tails, the twin tailed fox, is the fact that he can fly. Using his two tails as a propeller-esque thing. Don't question the biology how it works. And we're already done with the first act because this game is fast as heck as the orange best boy. And in case you're wondering, what is this incredible game that we're observing right now? Well, Sonic Robo Blast 2 is a 3D open source Sonic the Hedgehog fan game built using a modified version of the Doom Legacy port. So this is practically a Doom game, if you think about it. More or less. Maybe. Actually, Sonic, but you know, Doom Engine. <laughs> Um, Tails' flight has something very interesting about it. Not only does it allow him to, you know, fly as is and increase his uh, vertical height, but also the fact that if you spin dash, like fully charge up a spin dash, jump and fly immediately, the fly keeps your horizontal momentum, which is incredible speed tech for Tails. It makes this game super fast and super fun. And we're already at the first boss. Neo just blowing through it as incredibly as possible. And the best thing about this game, in my personal opinion, I also speedrun this game, but as Silver the Hedgehog, is the incredible soundtrack this game has. And even better, if you see this and you think, this game looks really cool and I would love to try it. It's free! It's a fan game. Just use the search engine of your uh, preferred choice, look up Sonic Robo Blast 2 and join in the game. Because in the speedrun we blast through the levels at incredible speed. However, there is so much to do, so much to explore, routes that only Sonic can take, routes that only Tails can take and Knuckles can take. There are many different characters to choose from and lots and lots of mods. How are you feeling so funny? Are you happy with uh, the green growth? Yeah, I am really happy with how it's going right now. <laughs> now we're in the second set of levels. Uh, very technological based, for many characters cycle based, but Tails, you know, orange best boy, you don't care about cycles, you just fly. You fast. You amazing. Can we get some love in the chat for Tails? Very underappreciated. Yeah. <laughs> Give all the love for Tails. Tails the size. Yeah. <laughs> so, this game also, as I mentioned earlier, is very, very, very welcome to modding because there are many character mods, many soundtrack mods and whatnot. And about the soundtrack mods, we will have a little bit of information later on from Nia. So stay tuned for that. And Tails is now rushing into Techno Hill Act 2, introducing the purple goop mechanic thing in the genie. Looks a bit weird, but don't worry, Tails handling it very, very well because he can actually swim. Mm -hmm. Another point that makes him better than Sonic, Tails can swim. I'm just gonna continuously say how awesome Tails is in Bash Sonic. <laughs> no, Sonic's amazing. I look forward to seeing more of him later on in this incredible marathon. No. Yeah. Yes. Um, we are currently, like, in the middle of this level. Um, this level is qu quite long, uh, if you do it, like, the intended route. But as you can see, like, the flight here is just letting us fly above the stage and letting us get past a pretty significant amount of progress that we will have to do otherwise. I think from a speedrunner's perspective, you can say that the best parts of levels are the ones we don't have to play. <laughs> Yes. If it's skippable, we love it. And skipping is the name of the game when you're playing as Tails. As you can see, the uh, spin dash flight is super fast. 
and I'm genuinely impressed by just how well Nia is able to like cut the corners and take shortcuts. Uh, the next boss, Ackman, shooting out uh, the blue balls, not from the special stages, but like the purple goop, but the blue, and it actually hurts on contact, so Nia has to be careful where she like steps onto, on the movement, but then again, Tails being too fast and too strong, just jumps over everything. Can we get hitless? I always manage to land in the goop one way or another. Yeah, yeah hitless. hitless. Good job. Tails got through, egg number three. Love to see it. If my memory doesn't wrong, yes, Deep Sea is only so, one. Yeah, so we're in Deep Sea Act 1, and you can maybe hear right now that we have different music than the vanilla game that we're playing. What is this? Well, this is a remix that I made myself, and we have one for Act 2 as well. This is the only two uh, changes we have to the soundtrack for this particular run. As you can also see, Tails, the soon-to-be Olympic gold swimmer, the fast flight also works underwater, which I guess makes it fast swim? Yes. It's actually faster to swim than to fly. Really? A little bit, yeah. Oh. At least it feels okay. like that. <laughs> I think Tails would deserve Olympic gold for swimming. Would, uh, do you think spin dashing before the beginning of the race would count as cheating? Hmm, probably. Well, we'll have you win another medal. So, Deep Sea Act 2, the water slide level, which is really fun. And I just really like water. For those of you who don't know me, I emphasize a lot of the importance of hydration, so do make sure to drink plenty of water, you lovelies out there, but not to the point where it Tails does it, because you want to stay on top of things as much as possible, because as you see right now, Tails prefers to take top routes in many levels, because top routes in Sonic games normally are the fastest. Normally. There are some exceptions, but in this case, we want to be as fast as possible, making good use of the fast swimming. Does the fast swimming stack with the speed shoes as well? Yes, it does. Oh, so you can fly at mock speed. Now, this is a puzzle level, but luckily, being a speedrunner and incredibly smart, Nia already knows the solution. So we push these gargoyle statues, I think, backwards. The door opens, we spin dash up a ramp. Tails just keeps flying. Now we come to a water slide section where we just have funsies and go wee. But since the water slide section is more or less an auto scroller in quotation marks, please, Egg, my friends, do you have anything you wish to share with me? I actually do. So, we have just opened a new bid war for all of you to donate to. We've got to run tomorrow morning for Echo Jr. And now you can bid on which characters played in that speed run. Will be Echo, will be Kitney, or will be Terra. Let your dollars speak for themselves. And remember, you can you can just also donate both to bid wars and to Target, so you can still work on helping fund that link to the past and. D4DJ Easter Egg Song Showcase, if you wish. Back to you, Roman. Thank you very much. Echo is a fascinating game. I look forward to the speedrun because it's one of the games where I first was like, what is happening? I'm a dolphin swimming in the ocean. Good times. Time travel and aliens. Like, huh? Okay. But anyway, we're not playing Echo. We're playing Deep Sea Egg number three with Eggman now disappearing in the water, reappearing, and then shooting us with rockets. Now, you see the electro ring that comes off of it, that will become very important very, very soon. Because after the first few hits, Eggman will soon decide to... Hold your breath. Now, one more. No. Eggman is starting to spawn copies of him, and you need to figure out, okay, which is the real one that we need to hit? It's the one who sends out the electric donut, as I shall refer to it now. I am maybe craving donuts, maybe not, that's for you to decide. Ooh. Wonderful job on the boss, my friend. Castle Eggman Zone, Act Number One. It is a level that aesthetically is really cool, which it has very much like second to last level vibes in my opinion, but it's just in the middle of the game, which makes it even cooler because of the medieval uh, castle setting and tells again making good use of his flight ability. This level is really tricky with some characters because you need to cover great distances in the air, which is of course where Tails shines, because even after being launched from the like spinny thingies, I don't know what the official term is, Tails can then reactivate his flight. 
So you already get a huge aerial momentum boost from these spin tiles as is. And Nia being so fast and also being like, no, I don't even need to use it. I'll just fly the entire way. And use the springs to get up to the platform where we normally fly a silver, but Nia is just too good. <laughs> I like to like, compare the route differences. Again, here, normally you would have to spiral around the tower to get upstairs. But Nia, using Tails' flight and ability to just continuously gain height to skip as much as possible. And we're already at the bridge section. The bridge section, also a very short auto-scroller. So, Peace Egg, what is this amazing charity we're collecting money for? Oh, thank you for asking. For Winter Pride 2023, we're raising money for Point of Pride. Point of Pride is a trans-led 501c3 nonprofit organization that provides access to gender-affirming health and wellness services. You can visit pointofpride.org for more information about their programs, how you can apply to receive aid, and how you can support them year-round. Thank you, Roman. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful cause. It's a great, great opportunity to help and make a lasting change in the world. So do keep those donations rolling if you can. And Nia, being in the second act already, and this is a route that I'm personally not familiar with. It's interesting. Oh, now I know where we are. There are speeches sitting in the water. <laughs> See, this is the very interesting thing about Sonic Robo Blast 2. If you play different characters, you have access to so many different routes that more or less interact with each other, like lead back to certain key points, but you can just discover new things all together. I've been speedrunning this game myself, and watching this is like, wait, what? There's a section there? I don't know of this existence. Ah, apologies. Um, taking a hard left, we normally would take a hard right, because Tails, again, his flight ability giving him access to routes that are locked off to Sonic. Knuckles, maybe? I think some parts that Tails can't access to, Knuckles can with his climbing. But there are also more characters, by the way. In the base game, you could also technically play, that, 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 play as uh, Fang, or Knack, depending on how you want to call him, or Amy, if I remember correctly. Amy is one of the best characters, right, Neil? Yeah, Amy is really good. Uh, she can use her hammer, and it's pretty cool. The Pico Hammer. I like the sound it makes. Now comes a really cool boss, because it has an interesting mechanic. Normally we just smack Eggman in his moustache, but we can't do this, because this time we have buttons that we need to press, because Eggman learned from his mistakes, and it's like, I'm hiding myself and surrounding myself with spiky balls. But... That is no use, because for some reason it is linked to color puzzles on the floor with arrows on top of it. The Tails can just jump onto you, unlock the cage, and then hit Eggman. Oh my gosh, I thought you were landing on the spikes there. I was so close to landing on that. <laughs> it was perfect edge landing. I'm a big fan of this boss, because as you might be able to see in the top row, there are the egg robots that have the like foam finger thingies from uh, sports stadiums and whatnot. And if you accidentally touch one of them, they do make the baseball home run sound, and it's hilarious. Now, Eggman has been hit several times, he leaves his cage and decides, you know what, I'm gonna just fly and hit you. Wait, Tails can fly as well. He did not think this through, because the orange best boy is coming for him. The one ah. hit- Ah! We got the baseball sound. <laughs> it was just for showing purposes, because Nia loves- they know so much I love the sound. Now we hit I the boss. Yeah, we have to show off the amazing soundtracks and the uh, funny little things that the game has to offer. And after this comes my personal favorite song in this entire game, Added Canyon Zone Act Number 1. It's the Wild West themed level, and I'm just gonna let you enjoy the music for a little bit, just because it's so good! I just... the, the pace, the sound, it's all great. And Nia showing off really well the incredible routing the Tails has in something like this. Normally we would have to go around the entire stage as many different characters, but Tails' flight, as seen right now, we don't need the tornadoes, we don't need to use any of the level inbuilt gimmicks to get around. Just charge up the spin dash, jump, fly, and keep the momentum going. It's, it's really fast actually for me, like, I'm, just, I'm every now and then just sitting back on my chair thinking, this is incredible. This is why I personally really love Tails as a character and the Tails speedruns, and Nia incredibly skilled in showing off what makes Tails such a cool character. Like, normally, people would say, oh, you know, it's just the easy mode, because you don't need to do any of the difficult stuff. 
it is more difficult than Nia makes it look, trust me. And all the more respect and shoutouts to Nia for pulling off this incredible run. Because the Bespo just flies and flies and flies and never tires. Although he can! It might not look like it, but Tails, as in all of his uh, incarnations, has a certain stamina amount to him. So whenever he does end up flying too long, stamina runs out and he does start to descend. Eric, can I you hang too? Yeah, could, could, you, could you? I killed to actually try and do something very risky, and it's a double minecart skip. A double minecart skip? I know of one skip. Yeah, I'm going to show a double. If I don't get it first try, I'm not, not gonna do the first one, I'm just gonna do the second one. Which is the the more known one. Okay, I'm, cu I'm, I'm curious to see what Whoa. happens. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but but I see the idea behind it, I see the idea behind it. So, the idea is on the uh, when we're on the rails, we can't jump out of it, we can't fly, we are locked into the minecart and we have to follow the route it uh, pushes us on. But we can't switch the rails we're on. We have the option to jump, which allows us to do... <coughs> Apologies. I got it. Hey! <laughs> nice! First try, first try. Um, the other one was just warm up. Yeah. That is another skip coming up. So, the tricky part here is that normally it would need us to go like around the entire thing, like this little maze area in the section, but we decide to not do that. We go back to our initial track, and I'm gonna be quiet for a little bit because this jump is tricky. You got it. Wonderful! And we skip this entire maze section. This is a trick that is a lot more difficult than one might think. Like, the... The timing for this is really, really, really precise. Many people use different uh, setups with using first-person mode and whatnot. You can actually switch into first-person camera in this game as well. It is a Doom clone, after all. And, um... Nia just pulling it off, like... <laughs> I'm not wearing a hat right now, but if I were, I would uh, pull it off in respect to you. We're not actually fighting Fang! He is a boss in this game. Depending on who you play, he can be a massive pain to fight. But luckily we just need to be aware of where he jumps, using his tail as a little spring. And just hit him as much as we can. At the moment this fight is okayish to handle, but soon it becomes a lot more difficult, because Fang goes back into the middle, throws out his bombs, and the entire top part of the train is gone. So if we get hit by him in an unfortunate angle, we will be thrown off the train and just immediately lose the boss fight. <sighs> like that, for example. That was scary. That was really scary. <laughs> that was fine. Then... I... Yeah. <sighs> that was scary indeed. <laughs> and then uh, Fang just crashed through himself, jumping into the uh, side post. It's not actually a hidden stage in this one, sadly. I'm moving to Red Volcano, act number one. I'm all base you, uh, soundtrack in my opinion. It's actually flying one of my favorite songs in the game. I was really scared how you were flying the entire time with no rings, like, if you hit just one lava waterfall right now. Yeah, I I, I, I actually like doing that. Which um, makes it all, all the more intense. Yeah. I like uh, being a little bit risky in my... No! My, my what a save! <laughs> what a save! <laughs> <laughs> my flight didn't go up, so I <laughs> was so lucky. I thought it was oh, she's, you know, like flying or whatever. No, but just very quick thinking, jumping on the flight. <laughs> like, good job, Arcania, good job. <laughs> I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> Oh, this section's very tricky. The lava waterfalls, ooh, could have pushed us downwards and just uh, squished us against the lava, but wonderful timing, great movement. These birds are very annoying because if you don't bounce on them skillfully as Nia did earlier, they can grab you and pull you backwards, killing all your momentum. Normally the wonky lava don't work here, but we just fly over it, and we're now in the rocket, moving in to the next stage with the, in my opinion, also greatest song in the entire game. Yes, I take the liberty to say two games, uh, two songs in this game are incredible. Agrock 1 and 2. Uh, I mean, Arakin 1 and Agrock 2. So after we beat the first level, which is... Uh, don't hit the laser! Good job. There's a bottomless pit beneath, so if we would have been hit by the laser, would have been... No, we restart. So, these are the final few levels. As you can tell, like, the difficulty is increasing. There was a gravity mechanic right now, 
it would be a bit more uh, obvious if you turn off the camera setting. But, uh, wonderful flight. Um, there are certain sections in this level where the gravity switches where you're running on the ceiling and you can either choose to have the camera move with you, like Nia does, or not. Uh, it, it helps a lot to have the camera move with you, in my opinion. This section, very scary. The ceiling comes down, the floor comes up, potential squishing. 200 or 200 medals? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, I usually check uh, my emblems whenever I... I mean, of course I do. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I did download a full completed file to like use. Uh -huh just for practicing the game, when I switch computer. We are now in outer space, which has the same mechanic as the drowning, which is if you are too long outside where you don't have any air... What could oh, this happen? He might drown! Ah, good job! Oh. Uh, that was, that was scary, the timer was at zero. <laughs> Best music in the game. Next era came, but best music in the game. We freaking love Agrock 2. Oh, no, no! Ah. Uh, uh, um. Warm up, route, warm up. Yeah. Another great thing about this game, if you haven't noticed, you can set the music to not restart and just keep playing whenever you have to redo a checkpoint. Nia, again, using the time we have to just show off the incredible uh, quality of life things this game has to offer. All for you lovelies out there. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna go for the speed chase. Not for speed. Uh, it is tricky. Like this level has so many bottomless pits and situations where you can easily get stuck or uh, have massive time losses outside of the base. You know, as we are in space, and unlike water, we have some time to. Uh, run around, play around before the countdown starts. In the vacuum of space, that sadly doesn't apply. The moment Nia would leave the space station, just immediately 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. But Tails, being amazing as he is, didn't go outside. He just flew up into the tube, skipping the entire space section, and just hitting the um, trigger for the gate to open up earlier. Did you notice they widened the tunnels, by the way? They didn't used to be as wide in the past. Yeah, they, like... We are playing on the latest version of this game, and before, when we did runs on 2.2.8 and 2.2.10 or 11, uh, it was basically... They were pretty much, like, very small. Yeah, they were very narrow, so very tricky to get inside of them and whatnot. But nowadays they just widened it up, making it a lot more pleasant. Oh, squishy section, gotta be careful. And sometimes Pipes doesn't really like how it reacts with the player. So, I'm just gonna skip these blocks. They don't, we, need, we don't need them. That's, I see them and every time I hear in my head the Mega Man sound, the boom, boom, and I'm <laughs> so happy that Tails doesn't have to do them. And the walls here are made out of tomatoes, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, looks like tomatoes, you can't prove me otherwise. <laughs> they are actual freaking rocks. That yeah. are like kind of looking like tomatoes. <laughs> Tails got through act number two. Wonderful rhyme. And we are coming up now to a black core act number one, which is the race against Metal Sonic. The track is mostly laid out. We will try to use the spin dash flight as much as possible. There are some platforming sections where Tails just says, no, I can fly. And we are going for the speed shoes. And once we grab those, the race is mostly just follow the setup path. It's a very linear level mostly, except for the platforming sections that we skip. So my dear friend Vizag, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And would you like to share some of your amazing intel with us? I, I would. I'm going to go ahead and pick my jaw off the floor with everything I've seen during this run, because my goodness, this is incredible to watch. But I'd like to talk to you about merch in terms of Winter Pride and Power Up with Pride. We have merch for this event, yes, it's true. Adorable mugs, t-shirts, tote bags, and hoodies are all available in support of Point of Pride. You can type exclamation mark merch in chat to get the links to both our Winter Pride 2023 store and the Point of Pride store. Back to you, Roman. 
Thank you, we do love some good merchandise. Plus I've seen some of the designs in the intermission screen, so do make sure to check them out, they're really cool. Act number two, not three this time, already is the boss fight against Metal Sonic, because after we've beaten him in the race, he's a bit sulky, he's like, you know what? I think I'll just try to fight you straight away. And Tails, of course, being superior, and the orange best boy is like, no, I'll just dodge, I'll hit you, and then just hit you as many times as necessary until he admits defeat, or explodes, depending on whatever happens first. This fight also very tricky. Metal Sonic moves very fast, very erratically, and you need to be aware of your positioning. This section, the pinball section, that is a specific position that we do because Metal Sonic needs to hit the walls a specific amount of times until he gets vulnerable. So we try to position scary. ourselves <laughs> a little bit. We try to position ourselves near the edge so he does the tung tung like fast bounces between the edges. If you lose track of Metal Sonic or your positioning, it becomes very very difficult to recover just because of the way he behaves and pushes towards you. So Nia doing a really good job with positioning. 3D spatial awareness of where this metasonic being hit here and there is okay. The important part is to not fall off the elevator. Because that, again, is a bottomless pit. Unless you beat the boss, then it is no longer a bottomless pit. It's still a bottomless pit until the door appears, actually. I learned this the hard way. Oh, no. Yeah, I once also thought about it. Can you just, like, after you've beaten the boss, jump down to get to the thing faster? Nope. No, you cannot. I, I learned that the hard way because during a run that was going to be like, I think it was my first up early run, uh, was literally run after that run. I literally messed up by letting go of my button right at the end. Black Hawk 3, Eggman's ultimate robot that's trying to fight us. He has an electric barrier that prevents us from harming him, so we have to lure him into these uh, green pillars that lowers his energy barrier. This is a very, very difficult boss fight. He needs, I think, 12 hits in total, shoots a lot of stuff towards you that cover the arena in flames, has attacks that shoot you backwards quite a lot, which at the moment is not as bad as we have the barriers on the side, but this is a pure RNG festival. So as much as we practice, as much as we have skill, Nia needs to be able to think fast and react on the spot. So I will try to like hold back a little bit near the end now to give her the concentration in time that she needs to defeat the Eggman. But Eggman behaving really well and stepping towards the uh, uh, green pillars. Has happened so many times with so many runners of this game. We'll just try to lure him in and he's like, nope. He's finagling left and right and avoiding, this is the belly bone we don't like! Oh. It's okay, it's okay. We try again. As you can see, this boss fight is really difficult, regardless of which character you play. The thing we try, uh, the way we try to move, uh, manipulate Agman's movement is the fact that he normally always tries to move towards us. So we have to position ourselves between Agman and the green pillar, or energy beam, whatever you like to call it. And normally he behaves, but many a times, as you saw right now, he tends to just step around, step outside, have a good time. So the energy barrier is back up, as you can see by the lightning around him, which means we need to wait on the next pillar to spawn, position ourselves accordingly, and then hope that Eggman plays along with us. Uh, this is bad. Oh, the flames are really bad. Yeah. It's, it's very is... bad when he throws a bomb, and it's literally like at this spot where you literally need to be. Good thing that the walls weren't down, <laughs> otherwise I'm not yeah. just I'm out of the arena. This is where the really, really difficult part of the game begins. The barriers are down, we no longer have a safety behind us, so if... <laughs> nice fight save. There we go. Yes. Good job. If Agma would have hit us, unfortunately, we would have flown off, but final hit has been done. Time is coming up very short. If we hit the nose, we go down, and soon. I'll allow you to call time here. Yeah? Time. Yeah. GG's. Well done.
Ugh. How are you feeling? How was the run? That was scary. But I, I did everything to really ask, like, show up what you can do in this game. And this run is very difficult. Uh, it, it might look simple, but it is very difficult. <laughs> and where could people find you if they want to see more of your incredible content? Well, you can find me at uh, here on Twitch as Arcania CQ, but you can also find me on Blue Sky, and you can also find me on um, co-host under the same name. Um, so yeah. Any final shoutouts you want to give? I'm just going to give a shout out first to the SRB2 community the developers and the people inside of it really good community if you're into like wanted to play this game try it out it's completely free so plus uh there's a lot of mods so the modding community is very good as well there's also um a few shout outs i also want to give i want to give a shout out to uh Arieri, as well as um, I also want to give a shout out to, of course, my co-commentator, co Roman, who gave Hello, me such a really good commentary. Always a joy. And I also want to give a shout out to the uh, Sonic Roblox 2 speedrun community, which is amazing. Awesome. Thank you very much, Nia. We will be back soon. I will not do the outro. I'm not the host. I need to get rid of that habit of mine. <laughs> Thank you very you much, Julia. Totally I'm fine. a Roman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you very much, Roman. You can on Twitch as well. Uh, with uh, twitch.tv slash rh0min. And I will be back very soon with another very cool run that's happening. PSEC, do you want to introduce the next run? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. Again, I need to catch... I've been needing to catch my breath the last few minutes, so thank you for handling this, because that legitimately was an incredible run to watch. Thank you so much, Nia, and thank you for that lovely commentary, Roman. The next run coming up is going to be by HUDS601, and that is going to be Sonic Classic Trilogy, but it's a boss rush shuffler. And you might see in the schedule, it says for boss count for the Genesis. Oh, no, 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 that is not true. We unlocked an incentive that makes it an eight boss count shuffler. So if you're expecting chaos, and I don't actually know what to expect, I think you're in for a treat. There is going to be a lot of bosses, a lot of shuffling, and I can't wait to see what happens. So stick around. Winter Pride 2023 continues on. Hello again, everybody. I am Peace Egg, and this is Winter Pride 2023, running all this weekend. If you've missed any runs in the marathon so far, you can find them uploaded after the marathon on our YouTube channel. I believe we have a connect for that. Exclamation mark social might have some information on that. You can also stay up to date on this event and any future events. Hey, exclamation mark social will help here by following us on co-host. Blue Sky, 
or kind.social, which is a Mastodon instance. You can join that federation or another one and follow them. Or by joining our Discord. Links to all these can be found in the panels below the stream or by using what Ujasu just did very kindly in chat. Exclamation mark social. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we do have that Sonic Classic Trilogy Boss Rush Shuffler A Boss Count by HUD 601.